and action. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Billy, and this is Show and Tell. I have a guest today. <laughs> but before I bring her on, let's talk about my finished object. I really should call this graffiti because I embellished it with these little, if you can see little squishy things and not to neglect the back, I put a little surprise back there too. I started working on this, it's two years now, two years. Um, it might look like a make do and mend kind of a thing. Um, but actually I bought Malabrigo, it's called Wales Road, the color, and I bought several shades of, not that one, this hot pink, this magenta and the turquoise are cascade yarns. And then I did mix in some other little scraps that I had lying around from previous projects. Um, I wanted to embellish it with this and I didn't have anything like this. And I found someone on Ravelry who was kind enough to show me a picture of what she had. There were a number of people who responded to my plea for something that was pink and poofy. And she sent me a, a bunch of this stuff, just the right amount, so thank you. Um, as usual, the jewelry. This is a Swarovski crystal. These are paillette and glass um, tubes. And there's a little bit of white rubber holding it all together in there. These are French from the 1980s. And these are vintage glass beads. You can see those. Those belong to my stepmother. She purchased them. They, they didn't belong to her in the 40s or whenever they're from. Um, and this is blue lace agate with rose quartz. Another thing about this pattern is it's not a pattern that existed. Um, you'll remember hearing me talk about these this log cabin motif, which is a square that's done in a particular way. It starts with a center square and then you add on and you add on and you keep adding on the longest side until you arrive at a size square that you like. Um, so there are four of these. There's one on the left front, one on the right front, and one on the back left and back right. I had seen that on another jacket, but this part I borrowed from yet another pattern. So it's kind of like my own hodgepodge of a couple of different designs. You know, I forgot, to, I forgot to mention something about this sweater, which is that it's garter stitch. The whole thing is knit in garter stitch. And typically when you're knitting garter stitch, you're knitting, no purling, all knitting. But when you do garter stitch in the round, which is what happened on these sleeves, I knit the sleeves in the round. I did not knit the body in the round. This was flat on straight needle. Well, circulars, but used as if they were straight needles. Um, but when you're knitting in the round like this, you do have to alternate. Otherwise you get something that is not exactly, it looks similar, but it's not exactly how this looks, it's more compressed. So what you have to do to get the same look in your garter stitch is, unfortunately for people who don't like to purl, a row of purl, a row of knit, a row of purl, or a round, I should say, a round of purl, a round of knit. So just thought I would mention that. And yes, the good news is Fifi, I finished it, so now I can start another project, which is great because there's the knit along that's about to begin. I think by the time you're seeing this, it might have already begun, but 
we're in that zone. So I have my next project already on the queue and ready to go. So yeah, the usual things. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Billy Toy. And as always, I will put it here on the screen for you to see the spelling. And I do want to call your attention this time in particular to the show notes. Um, down below, I am going to have a lot of information this time. And I have added a new feature, which is that if there are things that I've mentioned in previous episodes, products that I use, whether it's circular needles or stitch markers, locking mats, other things that I might have mentioned, or things that other knitters use that you might like to use. If you use the links that I have posted in the show notes, I'll get some little bit of something from Amazon, um, which I think is asking very little of my viewers. If you're gonna buy these things anyway, it would just help support the channel. Um, so. Thank you. And there might be some things there that you never thought that you needed, but you might like to have. Another thing that you could do that would be helpful is to hit the subscribe button. I'm pretty sure it's this corner, <laughs> but it might be this corner. Um, and when you see the little bell, I think there's several options. Choose the top bell, which is the one that will send notifications to you so you'll never miss an episode. And lately I've been doing premieres and one good way of finding out when those premieres are happening is to receive those notifications. All right, in just a moment, I'll be back with my guest. I have a special guest with me today. And in just a moment, I'm going to ask her to introduce herself and she's going to tell us about the city where she lives and she will also share with you something very unique and special about a place in her city that you might like to visit when we are able to travel again. So Sam, take it away. Hello, my name is Sam Miller and I live in London. I live in East London and East London is not often a place on the tourist map, but it's a wonderful, wonderful collection of small village-like communities we have wonderful access to um, open, open land. So it's actually like being in nature. So there's a river you can swim in right around the corner from me. Um, you can walk the dogs. There's nature reserves, it's absolutely beautiful. And even half a mile from my house, there are horses you can ride on. And not many people think that you can have the best of both worlds like that. So I'm two miles from the center of London. You can just hop on the bus or cycle in. And then we've got nature the other side. And um, I mean, I could go on, but it's a wonderful place. People are very, very, very welcome here. And it's very, very diverse as well. And incredible for food, Perfect. vegan vegan food, which I eat, which is amazing. Perfect. Perfect. So how I came to find Sam was through a prior guest of mine, Siobhan. Siobhan knit the sweater that Sam is wearing. So let's talk about this sweater first. Um, it's Tyrolean, it's the Austrian style, but how you go about putting your outfits together is something that intrigues me because I've, I've seen a number of your different ensembles. ensembles. Um, so tell us what comes first? Do you pick the sweater that you want someone to knit for you and then find the other garments to go with it or do you have you're going to stand up and show us there's a dress underneath this sweater right this goes beautifully with this gorgeous you can't see it peter pan crepe 1940s dress which is short sleeve with puff sleeves as well um, it was a happy accident actually that this cardigan that siobhan knitted me matched this dress perfectly I've got a lot of dresses. I actually sell vintage as well. But in answer to your question, um, often it starts with me seeing a pattern um, that I absolutely love. And then, then I will think about the color and working it into um, an outfit I have or a dress or whatever. 
and how I will actually choose the colour to fit because it is very, very important to me colour, um, as I can see it is to you. And I think most people who knit um, really appreciate the, the sort of varied palette that that can, can offer. So yeah, that, that would be the starting point, but I would definitely choose a knit knowing what it's going, I'm going to be wearing it with. Uh, so it is what I suspected. You have the dress and then you say, okay, I want to find some sweater that will coordinate with this dress. Let me find a pattern. And you're having that pattern knit to match the dress, right? Or the other way around. I'll, see, way a around. I'll see a pattern that is so divine that I think, my God, I've got to have that. But the and color then, choice? Yeah, then I'll, then I'll find something to wear with. But the color, I'll then think, gosh, now what would I wear it with? It might mean I have to get something else, but the, the knit is often the center of it. So I have knits that are just kind of plain that would be, say, to go with a particular dress or whatever. So I'll have, you know, a green cardigan, a red cardigan, a da da da. But in terms of sort of special things like this, this would be the sort of the focal point. And then I'd have sort of plain things often that would go with it. So, you know, wool skirt or trousers or whatever. Yeah. So I'm guessing that your vintage wardrobe is vast. Disgracefully so, but, because, <laughs> but because I sell. I can sort of, you know, it's a, it's a sort of movable piece. It's 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 a it's a rolling thing. So when it gets to bursting stage, I can sort of sell things on, and I've kind of operating a sort of one in one out policy. But there's quite a lot actually on the in stage, shall we say? So um, yeah, my poor husband. You and I will talk privately about that after the show, <laughs> so I can get first dibs. <laughs> <laughs> whatever is exiting yeah we're, we're we're maximalists we don't really do minimalism in this house I'm, I'm all for cramming it in um in you know ordered chaos but um yes lots and lots of things do you have a particular time period that's of interest to you or anything vintage goes no 1940s with exactly. Yeah, and I dip my and every day I'm 1940s, sometimes 1930s, and occasionally 1950s, but nothing else but that. And I would wear 95% original every day, even even if I'm gardening. Yeah. Wow, good. And you have these hand knit bathing suits also, do you? No, I draw the line there because they go very very baggy and actually. I have got a vintage bathing suit, but they're very expensive. And um, so you need to sort of look after them um, because obviously they got worn to death. So they're a bit like trousers in the vintage world. Some things are harder to find, knitwear being one of them, because of course moths and wear and all of that is that meant that they just don't have the longevity of say a dress. So it's it's expensive to buy original knit. I do have a few pieces which I've, I've got here to show you, but um, yeah, the knit the knitted swimsuits, um, no. But I, I would I would I would consider it. I would consider, it, but I do I'm I'm a swimmer. I do like swimming. Oh, but you could have one of your knitters whip something up. There are patterns for vintage swimsuits. Yeah, see, actually, yeah, I think I might ask Siobhan. <laughs> And you can really play with the colors. I mean, I've seen Art Deco paintings of bathers where they're wearing really fun colors. Also on Broadway from time to time, they have these revivals of shows that were from the 30s and the 40s. And the costume people just go all out for like, you know, bright red and yellow. Yes, and, or, and, and, and geometric, sort of clarity. Right. right, I mean, you could have something really fab. And you probably have these big sun hats and umbrellas. Yeah. Oh, well, okay, I'm, I'm on it, I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> Watch your face. All right, I'm going to change the view so that it's all you, and I'm just going to let you rip because it seems like you've got a lot that you want to share with us. So please take it away. Well, you should ask me some sp specific questions, guide me so I don't ramble, but I did bring some of my fave jumpers, obviously this being one of them. So I have things that are just sort of practical for warmth. You know, London gets cold. 
Um, I cycle, I walk the dog, um, and I like to be warm. So jumpers are and, and um, cardigans are very, very important to me. So, um, you know, there are mainly 40s things in my collection, but then I've got a few 30s things. So I've just got a pile here and I will show you some of the lovely things I've got. So I thought um, I put them on hang. This is this is a lot. This is one of my recent ones that my friend Siobhan I mentioned made me, which is a 1930s pattern, which is so, so beautiful. And it really wears so well. It's really, really soft and comfortable. And it has bows and two of my absolute penchants are bows and stripes. So this is an absolute winner on every front and gorgeous cuff detail with, you know, slight ballooning there. Absolutely wonderful. Just do me a favor uh, before you put that one aside. Can you hold the buttons up really close to your camera? Oh, and she's put original glass buttons in. Um, and most knitters, um, Siobhan always does, uh, will go for vintage buttons because, you know, most people have a collection somewhere in Granny's tin or whatever. And I think buttons are sort of quite precious and people do tend to keep them, thankfully. Um, so, Here's another, here's another one from, which I love, I've got this in two colors. This, this actually, again, is Siobhan knitted me this, but this is absolutely wonderful. It's so soft and it's really fantastic to wear under things. And I've also got this in sage green and it's brilliant to wear sort of under a suit. And um, these buttons, my next door neighbor actually gave me. No, up and to the right, like, sorry. I'm oh yes oh 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 yeah can you see oh yes they've got boats on yes they look almost like wedgewood but it's not in blue they're, they're actually bakelite they're gorgeous and um my next one i've had just as this was being finished and she was looking for buttons so it was serendipitous to say the least it um, really adds such a nice dimension well, the buttons are so important i think because if you're trying to make something look authentic you know a lot of people will put kind of you know um plastic glass buttons on it just it just spoils it when you think how much effort and energy a knitter has gone into you know the work's gone into making some beautiful garment it seems such a shame not to you know really invest in the buttons and glass is great because it's so hard wearing so um you know, um, bows continuing with the theme. This is an absolutely gorgeous one. And this has got a beautiful box pleat shoulders. So this is really, really striking on. It's an absolutely gorgeous one. And again, you know, I like things that come high up, keeps your neck warm um, uh, in the winter. And um, I just think it's, it's, it's very stylish. Um, but, you know, I'd wear that with some nice kind of wide leg trousers and say a beret and it's you know really practical it was sort of my equivalent of jeans um i love the back that the back also has that oh, yeah, the chevron is gorgeous isn't it you know i mean yeah i mean that that's the, the some of these patterns are just so amazing when you consider the whole history of of the war and make do and mend and you know that women were having to make make their own clothes and unpick things and be really really inventive so they might have to use two different colored wools that they wouldn't have uh, have conceived as putting together but it works beautifully so you've got people constantly sort of tweaking patterns and devising their own take on things so you know a lot of you know many of um the people who watch this will be familiar with a lot of these patterns and you see them but often with a bit of a twist or a personalized touch and and what have you and and Siobhan's actually very good because she will actually always recycle wool as well which I think really keeps within the spirit of sort of you know the utility and war and um you know and it's very much for a time when we're doing things slowly recycling upcycling and um you know reusing and uh being kind to the planet and making something that will last and isn't just throw away you know but, um, you know, just as an aside, it means you've got to be really good about storing things. So, you know, moths, the curse of the curse of the, the jump lover. What are some of your tips for people watching in terms of storage so that they don't get little bites? 
you've just got to be really, really organised. So at the end of every sort of season when you wear, I mean, wear everything all the time in rotation. Don't kind of shove something in the back of the drawer. Go through your drawers regularly during kind of the jumper season. But in the summer, what I do um, when, when it's coming up to sort of the end of the end of jumper season, which is soon, is I will, you know, carefully wash everything and then put them in bags and then put lavender pouches and things around the place and that will normally do the trick but the old plastic bag essential do you put anything inside the plastic bag like those little I, desiccant packs no 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 don't need to do that no um it's fine as long as it's you know dry when it goes in and clean but make sure it's clean and the other thing is and i'll bring it when i bring them out at the beginning it's, you know it's the end of the summer when it starts starting to get um cooler i'll just hang them in the garden to air on a sunny day and the su sunlight is the best thing to get rid of moth moth eggs so I'm off it often looks kind of like Mrs Tiggy Winkle's garden out here you know there's sort of jumpers everywhere and and my husband's jackets and all about you know what so many wool things so um yes but it do does the trick so um yes but you have got to be organized because it's absolutely soul destroying to open a drawer and find some treasured thing and I have you know. very large, I'll, I'll put a picture here, I have very large Ziploc bags that I keep my things in. And we've all learned through horrifying mistakes how, you know, and, and losses along the way. Um, the old sort of cashmere tragedy early on that most people have had when you sort oh, of pick critters they love the most expensive stuff they of go for the cashmere first yes 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 quite um so let me what shall i show you next what shall i show you next right okay um so cardigans big on cardigans C cardigans are great because you can layer up so um obviously a big thing in 1940s um patterns is the short sleeve jumpers as well which was a way of saving wool and it became a sort of utility garment so actually before I show you the cardigans I'll show you just a couple of short sleeved nice things I've got so here this is from a, a wonderful knitter as well called Amanda who goes under Betty Sparkles you should check her out on Instagram she's an amazing knitter I have um, seen her name yeah she's she's fantastic um and this is a lovely little sort of 30s um Shorts, but really nice double collar detail again with a nice buff of very puffy sleeves um but like you know lovely detailing at the back so you can get a nice tight neck necessary obviously um another one another short now this is a probably a, another very familiar pattern but um but a bows a winner again and a lovely lovely combination blue and yellow I think but you know these are, are great as well because I'm an artist as well um you know my hands are always arms are always getting mucky and dirty so short sleeves are the best so you can still maintain your core warmth and practicality but um you know and then you would just sort of pop a cardigan over um you know like I'd put a mustard cardigan over the top of that um and should just credit the lady who made this. This is this is from um, uh, a, a lady who uh, it's called, who goes under the name of Heavens Heavens to Betsy. So she's she's um, also does commissions, and that's absolutely beautiful. Um, this is another classic, and I've got something very similar. To this this knit, you'll tell me what this stitch is because I'm not sure. What is it? Oh, I'm not the right person to ask. Um... It's sort of a lacy. It looks. It's sort of. It's, you know, it's, it's a de lace. definite lace. Yeah, there's probably yarn overs in there. Would be my guess to get those little perforations. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it very nice. Like it doesn't look like it would be a difficult stitch. It looks like if you just follow the instructions, you're going to achieve that. Uh, I wouldn't. I'd have a nervous breakdown if I tried to try to do it. Um, I don't know about that. Oh well, I, I mean, I keep meaning to try, but actually, it's it's. Oh. Why bother when I've got these lovely people to knit them for me? And because I, and I, you know, it means I'll spend that time making my own art. So I figure we all sort of stick to what we're good at. Um, and actually even, I do a tiny bit of knitting. So like um, very, very basic. So like I make brooches with knitted, you see, knitted bows. 
so that's a little thing I've made and I and I make dolls you might have seen them um on my Instagram but they have little knitted elements but it's just a basic stocking stitch which is normally for for sort of a quantity of a shape for pockets or hats or something it's very very basic um so there's that one. oh this is absolutely fantastic because there's a lot of novelty um uh patterns that people used to make just to sort of cheer things up in the war mm. because it was so miserable so here's a fantastic one. Oh yes <laughs> it's great you know and you've got you that some of them are so out there they're brilliant um there's a lady knitting me one with uh, cacti on at the moment cacti cactuses oh cactus ah cacti <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. This is kind of word that I hear every day. So, <laughs> what in London? Everyone's cac cacti mad at the moment. Really? The, oh my goodness! Round the corner from me—that's another one for the tourists. We've got a whole cactus shop. I mean, huge. It's even got a cafe in. It's so big. So, I mean, ca cactus, huge. I don't know why. It's it's sort of it's sort of it feels like a bit of a kind of nineteen seventies things going on again. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, all, they're all the rage. You know, in the American Southwest, we have, you know, Arizona and New Mexico oh. and so forth. We have plenty of cactus. Yeah, I mean, of course, it's not probably very exotic, but to hear in London, a cactus is like the most exciting thing. I mean, I think it's the structure of it. You know, they're kind of like sculptural objects. You get these amazing big things, which, you know, you just never see anywhere around. Well, uh, I'm in a big city too, <laughs> that's not I, in the heart of the desert. <laughs> so, um, but people have them on their windowsills here. They're very easy to maintain because they require very little water. So if you go away for a month, you don't have to worry that your plant is going to be dead when you return. Oh yeah, they're perfect for people with bad memories of watering. <laughs> um, and this is a long, a long sleeve version of that same uh, knit. But I mean, the colours are amazing. I just absolutely adore these colours. And of course, you know, a lot of people might think, oh, what can I wear that with? Well, because of the colours, you can wear it with everything. You can wear it with red. I, you know, I often wear this with sort of royal blue trousers or red trousers or green. You know, it will go with everything. And my, my kind of, you know, driving mantra of how I put something together is colour. And it's the same within... An environment as long as you've got something to tie things together usually color color or shape anything will go um if you don't do that it will just look sort of random but um you will always sort of look fairly well thought out if you go for that to be honest so um yeah. and you're masterful at that yeah i mean it's probably it's probably bordering on ocd but i've just always been <laughs> I've just always, always been, and you know, and I taught art for 25 years. So, you know, color is very, very, very important. You know, and I taught art in mental health in a therapeutic setting. So I think the awareness of color there and how people respond to color um, was, was very much to the fore. And I think, you know, if I just walk down the street, I mean, quite, quite apart from looking like I'm sort of in a time warp, um, sorry, have you got flashing lights? My fairy lights at the window started flashing. I hope it's not. Reflecting. Yes, the, the lighting is changing. It's okay. Um, but people would say, oh, how nice. You're so colourful. It's like, yeah, you can do it too. Um, you know, but people have this strange idea that colour is frightening. And I read somewhere that 60% of all clothing sold is black. And it's sort of a you know an insurance policy because people are worried about getting it wrong I think um, but you actually feel better in color I think. I went through the New York black phase in the 80s when oh, yeah. everyone especially the in the fashion world which at that point I was I was a purveyor of costume jewelry so in order for my jewelry to really pop always having this black background everything yeah. was great on yeah. it the wonderful thing about a single color, if your wardrobe is a single color, when you travel, everything mixes and matches. So you can have like, especially with black because it's readily yeah. available, you can have black boots, black handbag, black hat, black gloves, black coat, and then you throw on a scarf or a statement necklace 
And then the next day you swap out the skirt for the trousers and the following day, a different sweater. But if it's all black, you have a whole entire wardrobe. So I went through that. Unless you have pets, I have to say, because I am partial to a bit of black now and then, but we've got a dog and, you know, and we did have a cat until recently. And it, it's just like a magnet to, uh, to dog hair. A dog that sheds or a cat that sheds, not all dogs shed. Yeah, I mean, I think what you're saying is, is right in terms of actually having black as a background. So, you know, you've got a big statement piece of jewelry or a colorful scarf or something like that. It looks fabulous. But that's when you actually choose it. And I think if people choose it because they love it, that's great. But if it's a default setting, um, I think, I think that's, that's very passe now. I hardly see anyone yeah. in New York, an occasional person, but oh. it's, real, it's over. All the young people around here, black all the time because there's an 80s revival going on. Ah. So, it, so it's really, it, it's making, because I was sort of, you know, growing up, the 80s was when I was sort of, teenager going into my 20s and um that's you know it's it's like it's the whole it's all come round again and you know we'll sit there chuckling and going hmm, yes I had that um so yes right back to jumpers I'm just going to show you a couple of cardies quickly because I do want to show you all these because I'm sure people will be interested this is beautiful because it's got gorgeous bubbles on bubbles. Hmm. and I really love the color again nice glass buttons and um it's sort of muted orange with uh, and it's, it goes with everything and it's so so comfortable and this was one of the first jumpers i ever cardigans i ever bought in vintage and i actually got that from ebay it's one of the few things um you hold it up so we can see the the full thing yeah great it's really it doesn't do it justice. It's got really great shoulders, really, as, as do all these things. And if you have a look behind me, there's a lovely cardigan jacket that if you can see that's something Siobhan knitted me. That's a, a, a sort of late thirties one. Do you um, have shoulder pads in everything? No, not only, I've actually, no, I've actually got very square shoulders as well, which sort of helps. Um, but a lot of them I do, if they've got a really puffy shoulder, Something like these, you don't need to, just because of the, and, and the, the box pleats, you don't actually need a shoulder pad because they'll stand of their own accord. Um, similarly, something like that, you know, it does, it will puff up, so you don't need it. But it, some things I've got do require a shoulder pad and they look amazing, you know, if you want to re th this, these have shoulder pads. So you can get the really high, because that's, my shoulders and that bit there is the little kind of little little pillows she's knitted that you said I mean they're wonderful but you have to be careful if you're wearing um a coat with shoulder pads in as well because it's all it all get it all gets a bit kind of you know 1980s sort of a dynasty dynasty um well if you're, not you're Joan Crawford I mean some of those Hollywood people the shoulders were gigantic I've got, a, I've got a few things that are like that. And it, that's sort of fine for going out. I mean, I've got some shoulder, you know, coats with massive structured shoulders, but sometimes you just can't literally sort of fit the shoulder in with too much jumper. Um, so yeah, you have to be careful about that. But um, mostly they're just fantastic. They'll fit under anything. This is great. This is another novelty one. Um, and that's sort of based on bridge. So I think that's that's the, it's called the bridge pattern, and this is a lovely lady, um, Beata Beatrix. She goes under on Instagram, who who made that for me. She's actually got one on the needles as we speak, um, which has got stripes and bows on. Strangely enough, and we kind of sort of designed that together. So I'll be interested to see how that turns out. Um, let me. Oh, that's that's you know, and and hats. This little set, Siobhan again knitted me, but it's like, you know, classic, just a classic everyday um, sort of 40s cardigan. You doesn't, the color is absolutely beautiful, really sort of strong purple, um, sort of early 40s, um, but she had this some wool left over. So she made this beautiful little, just sort of perch beret that goes with it that is so lovely. Um, and I think, you know, more knitted, people need to be knitting more hats. There's a number of people who 
who do it, but they are so practical because you can just pop them in your pocket, keep your head warm. And if you wear them in the right way, I mean, I think if you put anything to one side, it suddenly looks like you've made an effort and it looks a bit, looks a bit, <laughs> whether you should pull it down like a tea cozy, like a granny. I'm so, well, trying to condition myself to not play yarn chicken, not be down to the last yard of yarn as I'm finishing a sweater. I've been really trying to order additional yarn, extra yarn, so that I can have enough left over to do a little beret. Sometimes, yeah. um, for people who have watched prior podcasts of mine, people know that I sometimes purchase the hat and then knit the sweater to coordinate oh. the hat. <laughs> Therefore, I don't need to knit a hat. And that's what happened recently. I was down to the very end. I actually ran out of yarn, like maybe two feet too short. Oh I had to borrow a little piece of yarn from somewhere else and <laughs> use it to finish it off. But anyway, yes, yeah. little beret just gives it a nice little uh, French I flair. Or a little, a little scarfette, you know, or a little, a little bow or something. And it, it just, you can just, you know, sometimes just a detachable bow, I think is really, really nice because it sort of dresses something up. Um, uh, I'm trying to think what, Nick, and, and you have to get onto fairer. I'm, 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 is it all right if I just carry on like this? Yeah, I don't... please, it's fabulous. So, Fair Isle, obviously just wonderful beyond belief and it's it's like sorcery to me it's so clever I don't know how people manage to do it um this is my most my most recent one and it looks absolutely gorgeous and it's got really strong shoulders um I can't remember what the pattern is um it's from this lady called Linda it goes under knitting for victory and oh, she's on Instagram as well she's beautiful she knits for films and tv she's done a lot of of film work, um, all from authentic 40s patterns, absolutely beautiful. So this one, and the colours are absolutely gorgeous, mm. but it's got a rib sleeve, which, which goes really well with a really nice pocket. And I love a collar. Again, authentic buttons up the back. So really snug. And of course, you know, you have to remember these were designed with you know, an environment in mind where people were, didn't have central heating, it was cold, there was a war on, so practicality was all, you know, and that also explains the, the shortness of a lot of the jumpers, because people were trying to keep, you know, things to a minimal, none of these sort of ballooning, you know, in the, in the 30s, obviously, there was a lot, there were, you know, people had more wool, so if you look for at this people, beautiful... Excuse me, for people who don't know Fair Isle, it's mm. a, like a double thickness. Would you be willing to show a little bit of the inside of that? I'm sure it's beautiful on the inside. So the person who knit it doesn't have oh, to be. It's, it's absolutely very... magic. Hi, you see what's going on. Yeah. So that makes it super warm because it's yeah. not just what you see on the outside. There's a lot going on on the inside yeah. too that makes it double layer. Thought of that, and of course, it's so that's so obvious. So um, yeah, absolutely, because of course, every every is being ca carried on. So yes, this is, and of course, the Fair Isle tank top is the sort of iconic war look, you know. So here's a really, I mean, I just wear this all the time. It's brilliant. So you just pop it over shirt. You can put a cardigan over the top, or a, you know, for me, like a tweed jacket or something. And it's really, really practical. Um, that one, I can't remember where I got. This is a lovely one with the same lady, Linda knitted me with a matching beret, which is somewhere here, which is so lovely. Can you see that? And I think, you know, the thing about the thing about the, the, the Fair Isle it, the tank top is the way to wear it is not have it too big and baggy if you want to sort of look smart and neat it really needs to be quite fitted so have it cropped actually to size um you know here's the little beret that goes with it which is absolutely gorgeous when you have them together so for um, the knitters out there who are watching that means negative ease or maybe zero ease yeah yeah instead yeah. of a positive ease which is what a lot of contemporary things are where there's room to spare yeah, no, I mean, absolutely not. It, the fitted look is really, really important because I think there was a dearth of fitted garments just because of um, because of rationing and people still wanted the glamour of the fitted look, but they had to get, you know, whether it's a swimsuit or whatever, they had, you know, 
they knitted, un you know, as you know, they knitted underwear even, you had knitted right. bras. Um, so, you know, it, and of course that takes a certain amount of skill to really knit to fit, you know, to really get the shoulders absolutely bang on and the waist right, etc. cetera. So um, this is actually an original 40s tank top. Um, and it's in amazing condition considering its age. So that's 80 years old um, and washes really well. I wear it all the time, look after it, feel very responsible not to let the moths have it, obviously. Um, uh, this is my light. This is a sort of interesting fair art because it's sort of um, not, doesn't have, it's, it's more of a sort of soft pattern. It's got a more rounded, but it's a, again, a very nice practical sort of country sort of look. So for, for day wear with like a nice sort of trilby or whatever I'd wear that with, with, with trousers. Um, and that is by a lady called um, Adrienne who knitted, knitted that. It's very lovely. And uh, let me just quickly show you this before. Um, because that was the thing I was going to show you, this lovely night. This is not the one that Amanda did as well. Beautiful, because saying about actually when people had more money, uh, not more money, rather there was less, there wasn't the restriction, restriction of rationing. So people could have the luxury of big sleeves and, um, you know, longer and a lot of frippiness. This, this, it's got a nice belt to it, this, which is really great. This um, has the beautiful drape to it. Is it cashmere? No, it's not. I think it, I think it's alpaca. It's so soft. It's just amazingly comfortable to wear. And um, she's a brilliant knitter. I have to say she really, really is everything. You know, it just it does fall so well. And again, lovely original buttons. So, you know, I often wear that with um, with a skirt, but I'd wear that with a beret and with a tie even. So it's got that sort of kind of um, utility late 30s sort of mannish look that a lot of women were starting to wear, sort of the independent woman. And because it's got this belt, it's got a sort of jackety feel to it. So um, there's that. And I should just show you a couple of original ones. And you know, obviously these are really, really rare because of course the moths have had their way. And th this is the only original one that's actually got its little original shoulder pads in I don't know if you can see poss possibly oh, yeah. um but very typical cropped um but you know you'd actually have often low cut as if it if it wasn't as if it wasn't a, a, a knitted garment you know like it was a blouse or something so it actually had yes you know, so this is designed to be very fitted um so you could wear that under you know just with a skirt and um under a jacket um, this is, it's got a few nibbles in this one, but that's another original 40s. Oh, it's very sweet, especially the sleeve. It's a, it's not yeah. a full length sleeve, yeah? Not a full length sleeve with nice finish at the mm -hmm. bottom and around the neck. And Again, the classic buttons at the side, so that you get, so you don't get that. It's really important not to get that baggy neck. I think that's sort of, you know, really lets the side down if people try and do that because it's got to be, it's got to be sort of strong. And if you, you know, a lot of women would have like a little Peter Pan collar out the top or or, or a brooch or something. So it needs to be to be tight because I think the look was very you know, uh, neat and tidy and, you know, compact and the knitwear really, really reflected that. Um, the people of the period seem to be very compact. When I look at vintage clothing, there's always 26 and 28 inch waists. Well, I have a 28 inch waist. Um, <laughs> Don't rub it in. <laughs> but, that, that's, but that's because I'm a vegan, you know, I'm a whole food vegan and I have been for years, you know, you can eat your weight in food if you're vegan you just will not you know it's kind of the way nature designed you just you won't you it, it's fine it just is the way it meant to be but of course in the war they weren't vegan but they didn't snack they didn't have sugar 
they didn't, I mean, they all chain smoked, of course, which suppressed their appetites, but, um, you know, there just wasn't the, the food around. So, you know, if you look at studies, it's very interesting. People was exponentially so much healthier after the war, it's incredible. Um, as you know, heart disease, cancers, all of those sort of things went plummeting down because people were forced into eating in a way that, you know, was predominantly vegetables and this, that, and the other. So um, it then it then changed. Another interesting fact, non-knitting, is, is that because of scent, because they were cold, um, it keep it you use up obviously more calories just keeping warm keeping your body warm mm -hmm. central heating and um and also because of our increasingly um you know easy lifestyles in the west for most people i hasten to add um we have no shortage of food and this that and the other we are just generally getting bigger you know that's that's a fact we are generally doing it. and of course there was more activity so people would have to cycle you couldn't just get in a car and whiz to you know you were doing all the time busy 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 so yeah well pre-pandemic i was walking five or ten miles a week sometimes five or ten miles in a single day and mm. yeah i mean i wouldn't lose weight doing that but i could keep my weight stable but i don't have a good metabolism and lucky mm. people who do um yeah the 26 inch waist i don't see that when i look in my crystal wall yeah and the, the 20 the 26 inch waist is pushing it and i have to say there are so many times i'll i'll find a dress that's just like to die for and it's 26 inch waist a lot of the suits um have you know beautiful suits 26 inch waist is just impossible well um, sometimes people can have things let out if there's enough in the scene oh yeah i but, do yeah but for the people who might be watching who are not anywhere in this ballpark or you know 48 inch bust um it's you can really still find them you can still find you can still find them they would if, if in the vintage world it would go it would be called vola as in v-o-l-u-p if you would Google that, if you were on Etsy, there are, you can find. Um, they're pricey because they're limited quantities of those, but you can knit your own. That's what I was just about to say. That's, if you want the look, you can still, you know, just get the basics. You can get modern trousers, this, that, and the other, because you'll know from being a jewelry person as well. It's mostly about the accessories. So if you've got one authentic piece, so like a jumper, and then you dress it up with, you know, some a hat. Well, a hat. Hats fit everyone, particularly a tilt hat, you know, a berry. You, and, and have a, have an authentic handbag. Bob's your uncle, you know, you you've you've done it. So those are the things I love to shop for. <laughs> I'm terrible shopping for clothing because it never fits. I'm terrible shopping for shoes because they're always so uncomfortable for me. But hats, yeah. Easy. Handbags, oh. easy. Jewelry, <laughs> no fit required. <laughs> Those are yeah. the things that I enjoy shopping for. Yes, 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 quite. Oh, no, I mean, Harry, when you have more? Uh, well, yeah, and this, did I show you this one? Gosh, I can't remember. Um, that's that's another original. Which, no, we didn't see that. Um, wow. So, and that, I mean, unfortunately, because it's, it's dark here now, you can't see they're really lovely colors, a lot of these things. What are the um, colors? It looks like there's a light blue and blue and red and, and mustard on a beige background. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, you know, they were often very, very inventive with their colors. And, and again, probably it's because they just had a bit of yellow left over. And a oh, bit absolutely. Of blue. And I the think question thing, about that. you know, and you go, oh, it's, I, I know being an artist, you know, you'll find something. Oh, God, I've only got that left. Like, oh, actually, that works. So, um, you know, it's, tr it's just sort of trying things out and having to experiment and having to make do that leads you to the next big thing. So I, I'm, I'm all for that. And this is a lovely original, original um, cardigan with glass buttons that's so sweet. Oh. You can see that and it's got some really lovely um, embroidery around the yoke and a Again, they never sort of neglect the back. So lovely oh, little it's bit around. And such lovely um, pressed glass buttons with, with little flowers on too. And not, not even, and that I got from eBay. And I 
don't that hasn't even got a nibble in it you know and again so bite soft your but, tongue. Hmm? bite your tongue yeah <laughs> Um, can you show us up close just one of those little flowers? Yes. Please. I those ones. Hang on. Look at the back. Can you see that? Right there is great. If they've embroidered with wool, so the embroidery techniques with wool, I'm an embroiderer myself. It's very um, unusual. So I can't say that I've seen that. It's different from the embroidery on the sweater that you're wearing. Oh, yeah. Well, this what is this you're is, wearing. It's all double. This, well, this is integral. So this has been all this has been knitted in it. This is an add-on. So this is an applique embroidery. So this is like very um, Bavarian, and a lot of the sort of Germanic cardigans, Dirndl type um, folk styles from the sort of forties and on have that effect. So um, you know, fit, fitted kind of cardigan jackets, but then they go for a lot of a lot of embellishment with on embroidery in wool the cardigan that you're wearing that's not uh double stitched on the top no no i don't no 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 it's not no oh it's all it's all and these buttons i have to show you are amazing i don't know how she found them it was, again i think it was just luck but if you can see hang on can you see those you're not at the camera there you go oh they're, yeah. they're really absolutely gorgeous and they've got the exact perfect colors in for the thing so i mean again wonderful serendipitous thing um you know, and i have to say shamefully I, I actually this is all i've got down here to show you but i, I do actually have more <laughs> i think that that's a fabulous amount of stuff and one thing was more spectacular than the next fair isle i don't own a single one so for people like myself, it's just kind of shocking to know that somebody would have a whole array of Fair Isle. They are, they are a lot of work. I mean, I have done the technique, but not, not that 40s look. I've done something with birds, um, the birds oh, go all the way around. So you yeah. know, I, I know the technique, the two-handed technique. Um, but having those multiple colors, more than just two colors, is really a particular kind of workmanship. And I'll get there eventually. I, I have my eye on one vest that I would like to make that's very fine yarn and very thin needles. And I know it's going to take me a very long time to do, but I'll get there. I mean, I think yeah. it does take take much longer than anything else. I know that everyone who's ever knitted anything says, you know, it is a labor of love, Fair mm. Isle. It's, it's a whole new zone you have to get into to do it. Right, Siobhan said the one that she made, she made it for herself. <laughs> she said, I would not yeah, do another one <laughs> for a client. It's a lot of work. I can't speak from my personal experience, but someday I'll be able to say, yes, I've done that. Um, yeah. I think that you and I could just talk endlessly. I think there's so much more that I would want to know, but this seems like a pretty good place to say goodbye. And I hope that our paths will cross again, just a short hop over the pond. And yeah. you could be in New York and I could be in London. And ah, oh, that day, I'm it waiting. May it may happen soon, you never know. I think I think it will. I'm optimistic, ever optimistic about that. Well, I guess one last little question. Um, besides the jewelry that you've knit, have you ever knit a garment for yourself? Yes, I have. When I was younger, I knitted a few things. Um, actually, I started, I knitted quite a complicated jumper with a hood for my teddy bear that got me started my mother was an amazing knitter i have to say um she was she did fair isle and all of that and um and i did a bit and i just i i liked it i i enjoyed the i really enjoy the process of it um but not when it gets too complicated i just would get very very frustrated um and i just don't think i have the mental precision to follow a pattern that it necessitates you know I made a few big slouchy jumpers in the 80s as well you know when they were kind of all those big 
things, but that's very, they were very basic. Well, I salute you for honoring all of these fabulous knitters. And I think it's great um, to patronize that, you know, those people and help them along. And it's a two way street. I mean, you get these. Oh, I, I, and I'm grateful to them. I mean, I'm just so, so pleased they do it for me. It's unbelievable. And I am in awe of their skill. I really am. I think it's an incredible thing. I don't think you could have this large a collection if you were knitting it all by yourself because each one of those yeah. could take uh, several months. Yeah, yeah. So that's many, 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 many years of a single person attempting to knit all of that. Wow. Well, thank you again for sharing all of those with us. It's a little bit of an aberration for me. Most of my guests have been people who are knitting their own garments, but I'm glad that we had an opportunity to see your collection and thank you. Thank you again. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, so tell us about these dolls. Do you knit those little? I knit them. Oh, very this is my basic basic knitting so I knit their little heads and their brooches and their pockets and their bits of their clothing but mainly I'm a, a and it, you know I mainly it's, it's it's the sewing element and the embroidery so she is a making news this little dolly here and this one is a she's a this one is a sewing fairy so she's got things in her pockets as well and knitted pocket um, and I mean I have loads I, I do lots of them so they all have little knitted elements so she's got knitted head and knitted pockets and you some painted these faces I draw them yeah I just draw the faces on so um you know and they have oh, wow. so they're all original Victorian bits and bobs so that's Victorian dolls and um original Victorian photos and things that go with it and old um, uh, Victorian porcelain dolls and vintage doll parts. Oh, so, yeah. Now, if people are interested in buying these, how can they find you? Um, my art account is um, Diesel Cat. Um, don't ask me the name. It's actually, yeah, it was a mistake, but um, I can't change it now. But it's D-W-E, no, yeah, sorry. D-E-E-Z-L-E-C-A-T-T-E. -E -T -T -E. And um, I also have a link to my shop on Etsy there. And um, yeah. Perfect. I'll put that on the show notes. People there if they're, if they're interested and see the other things I make as well. So yeah. Okay, that's great. Thanks. My brooches, look. Oh. So these, these, are, so these, these are knitting. So these are I, this. This is on display. These are all ready to go for this sale on um, Saturday. Hence, I displayed them on here. So I did actually. I've actually pretty much run out now. But for knitters might be interested. I do. Oh, there's one. There's one left. There's a a knit. Oh, that's cute. That's cute. So um, a lot of my knitter knitting people who knit for me, and a lot of ladies who knit buy buy brooches with knit on, so they can proudly claim to the world that they are knitters. So.